Well, it's December 25th, and for a lot of people that means Christmas. But here on Locked On MLB, we celebrate another day. It's Ricky Henderson Day. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all about baseball, yes, even on December 25th. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for over a decade now, and I'm looking forward to starting my sixth full season here at the Locked On Podcast Network. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Yeah, you can see, you know, it's a lot of you are celebrating Christmas. Not everyone does. And I decided what is the best present I can give? You know, because if you follow this podcast, and I know I do, you know you're thinking about baseball all year long. I'm thinking about baseball during the Super Bowl. I'm opening presents today on this December 25th. And quite frankly, I'm thinking about baseball while I'm opening the presents. I'm guessing anything. I'm getting a bunch of baseball presents. That is the one constant in my life. No matter when I was a kid or as now I'm almost 52. All right, a third of my life is over. I'm thinking about baseball year round. And some of you are thinking about baseball year-round, too. You know, there's a lot of sports that goes on this time of year. God, some of you into college football. Some of you like going to a basketball game. I'm going to be going to a San Jose Sharks game in a few days. But the fact of the matter is, none of it is baseball. None of it is that day-to-day companion that you have with baseball. None, is, none of the sports can replace the fact that they play five, six days a week. You can pick up the paper or check your phone or check your dial, do whatever you want. Or you can watch the games, especially in those days where you have a rough day. And you know what? Especially here in California, when it's like you're leaving work, it's like 5 o'clock and games have already started on the East Coast. It's a fabulous, fabulous feeling to have between March and the beginning of October. And blink, they take it away from us. And so... I know where I'd like to be. Look, I'm, I'm right now. I'm surrounded by family. I'm surrounded by friends, and there's warmth and happiness and everything. Blah 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 blah. I want to be at the ballpark. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be every day. And I'm sure some of you are the same way. I'm sure some of you are like, I just want to go to a ball game. So maybe that's my present to you. That if you're wherever you're doing, the presents are open, or maybe you're. You don't celebrate Christmas. Maybe you're doing something else today. I'm here. Maybe you're alone on this day. I'm here. And I'm at a ball game. I'm at a ballpark. And I'm taking you with me. Now, what ballpark are we at? We're in Oakland. I realize that the Oakland Coliseum may not be the the sexiest of venues in terms of a baseball park to go to and probably not the top on anybody's wish list, but you know what? On December 25th, can you really, you know, be a beggar right now? I'm, at, I'm, I'm taking you to a ball game. Uh, I can't show you the game because it's being played right now, and uh, I don't have the, uh, I, you know, I don't want to get the locked on podcast that we're in trouble by doing a broadcast of the game, but I'm sitting here, clearly good seats are available here in Oakland, and, you know, it's a, I'm here on a fall day, it's a nice cool weather, game is being played here, the game I'm at right now is between uh, the San Diego Padres and the Oakland A's, and the grass is green, the empty seats are green, this hat I'm wearing is green, and actually, the sun's coming out, so I actually need my hat for the actual reason that people wear hats. And you know what? 
this is where I want to be right now. There is something quite sort of beautiful about a ballpark without any of the frills, without any of the, the modern amenities. It's just baseball. And believe me, on a, no, on a, on a, December, on a December day, having just baseball might be exactly what the doctor ordered right now. They're booing a player, I can't tell you who. And pretty, you know, pretty soon there's going to be that long stretch of the winter where, you know what, it's you know, the weather's getting cooler, baseball still seems far away, and you're going to have a real hard time getting anything that feels baseball-like. Something exciting just happened there. The thing is that right now I'm a little envious of you because you know what's going to happen. Now batting the left fielder, you know two, how the season out. unfolds. I know it's not going to involve the, the, the playoffs are not going to involve the A's and the Padres, but there's been a hero crown in October. There's been a game that will be remembered when people say 2023. It's like, oh, that's when blank happened. And it might be a seven-game World Series. It might be a four-game sweep. As I'm recording this, there is an absolute scrum in the National League wild card between Cincinnati, San Francisco, Miami, uh, the Cubs, the Diamondbacks. I don't know which one of those teams are going to be in the playoffs. Meanwhile, in the uh, American League, the Rangers and the Mariners and the Astros are all locking horns right there. Shohei Otani has cleaned out his locker room. He's done for the year. And the right now, I, something good just happened. Uh, right now, I don't know. Did the Astros repeat? I don't know. Did the Braves win? Did the Twins finally win a playoff game? Xander Bogarts. You know, I don't know. Which player was the big superstar? Which unknown or completely unheralded bench player came out and got some absolute October glory and will become completely beloved? Think about here in Oakland. You know, there's so many, you know, many, many years where they had great postseason memories here. And whether it's you know, obviously you, there'll be memories of like some of the retired numbers there, Catfish Hunter, Dave Stewart, Raleigh Fingers, Dennis Eckersley, Reggie Jackson. They all gave tremendous memories in the postseason. But there was also players like Gene Tennis who became a World Series MVP. There were people like um, you know, Coco Chris walk-off hit in the playoffs. Or you had the bunt by... Uh, Hernandez to walk off a game. You know, there's all sorts of players you don't expect to be big heroes who have come up big in postseason history for the A's. And that happens for every team that's had some sort of postseason glory. Who is this year's Gene Tennis? Who is this year's Mark Lemke? Who is this year's Francisco Cabrera? You know, who is this year's Marco Scudero? Or Cody Ross? Or some other player who was completely unheralded and became a immortal. I don't know. You know, because you're in the future. I'm just enjoying a ball game. So who's envious of who? You already know who won. Now, it is the 25th of December, and close people listening will know that I, I mentioned all the retired numbers up that are on the uh, uh, Mount Davis here in Oakland Coliseum. There's one I didn't mention, because Right there, the playing field is named after him. Not the stadium, just the field. I find that odd. That's Ricky Henderson. And Ricky Henderson celebrates his birthday today, December 25th. And it's an event that all baseball fans can celebrate, no matter what your faith is. You know, I was born into a Catholic no, tradition, but I'm not a religious person anymore. I'm not a believer anymore. Some, I know many of you are believers. Some are believers in this religion, this branch of Christianity, this branch of Judaism, this branch of Islam. There's all sorts of... I know I've got people of all different faiths who listen to me. We can all agree that Ricky Henderson is worth celebrating here on his birthday. And the extent of which we're going to talk about. Because 
I don't think you realize how great he was, but also the peril of that legacy, especially if this is going to be the final year here in Oakland. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you're looking to join FanDuel, it's the best time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over unders, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on. And finish up your NFL season with FanDuel, which is an official partner of the National Football League. Now look it, I'm sure you'd acknowledge the fact that Ricky Henderson is a great player. He's a Hall of Famer. His number is retired. Where is it? Somewhere right over there. His number is retired here in Oakland. He's a phenomenal player and one of the most exciting players of his era. An MVP. World Series champion, all-star, set lots of records. Are you really, really aware of how great he was? Do you understand that there are certain metrics you can use and not super seven, complicated saber metrics that, is, that will take a, a Caltech degree to understand, but simple meat and potatoes ways that you can look at Ricky Henderson and realize he's one of the best players in terms of offense in the history of baseball. Now look at we all know the fact that he's the stolen base king. We also know that he has 3,000 hits. We also know that he has stolen 100 bases three times. No other American League player in history has done it once. He has 1,400 stolen bases. He passed Lou Brock, who didn't have 1,000 in his career when he set the record. And he has been, uh, he led the league in runs five times, and... He is, at one point, was the all-time champion of stolen bases in the history of the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees, a franchise with, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, some decent players in their history. For a period of time, no Yankee stole more bases than Ricky Henderson in their career. And Ricky was only there four and a half years. I don't think you completely understand the ramifications of Ricky Henderson's stolen base records, okay? I mentioned the fact Lou Brock was the greatest stolen baseman before Ricky. Lou Brock had 900 some odd stolen bases. Ricky has 1,406. Now think about that for a second. In terms of leaders of stolen bases, what, 40, 50 do the trick right now? Let's say, you steal 70 bases, 70 bases, and you do that every single year for 20 years, Ricky Henderson would still have the stolen base championship. And I, the, Ricky Henderson led the league in the American League in stolen bases in 1980. He also led the American League in stolen bases in 1998. That's an 18-year gap between the first time he led the league in stolen bases and the last time he led the league in stolen bases. Now, if you take every single American League leader in stolen bases since Ricky Henderson's last time, from 1999 to present, and you added up all of their totals of all the leaders of stolen bases in the American League since 1998, all now their totals, they would still be 236 stolen bases shy of Ricky Henderson's final tally. That's someone who has completely redefined a position as the leadoff hitter and created a probably unbreakable record. But he's more than just a stolen base guy. I think a metric, an incredibly underappreciated metric of offensive excellence is times on base. That's pretty easy to understand. You're a batter, 
how many times do you get on base? By hit, by walk, by getting hit by pitch, whatever it is. Not errors, but all the times you did something positive to get on base. That's kind of the name of the game, right? If you're a batter, get on base. And how many times did Ricky Henderson get on base in his career? In his 25-year career, he got on base 5,343 times. 5,343 times in his career. Do you know who's done it more? Only three people in the history of baseball got on base more often than Ricky Henderson. And they're good names, too. You think I'm going to say Hank Aaron? Nope. Not as many as Ricky Henderson. You think I'm going to say Willie Mays? Nope. Not as many as Ricky Henderson. You think I'm going to say Ted Williams? Nope. Not as many as Ricky Henderson. You think I'm going to say Babe Ruth? Nope. Not as many times as Ricky Henderson. Three players have got on base more than Ricky Henderson. Ty Cobb, Barry Bonds, Pete Rose. And that's it. And I think it's safe to say Ricky, of those three players, is the one with the least amount of baggage. We're talking about a player where the only three in the history of baseball who have done the basic element of a batter better than Ricky Henderson are Rose Cobb and Bonds. That is not just good company to be in, that's four, right? Don't people say Mount Rushmore as some sort of metric of, oh, who's your Mount Rushmore of this, Mount Rushmore of that? If there's a Mount Rushmore of getting on base, Ricky's on it. But beyond the numbers, Ricky played the game with an unbelievable flair. He changed the game when he was on base. When he was on base, people couldn't keep their eyes off of him. Was he going to steal? Was he not? Suddenly, the players like Don Manley and Dave Winfield got big, fat pitches to hit because the pitchers were concentrating more on Ricky at first base. He had power. He could hit the ball out of the ballpark, just as the Toronto Blue Jays. He also bounced around. We all know that. But twice when teams acquired him in midseason, that team went on to win the World Series championship. The 89 A's trade for him when he was with the Yankees. He showed up in 1989 in his great return, hit key home runs against the Blue Jays and against the Giants in the World Series, and he got his World Series ring. He was the one who started the rally that was capped off by Joe Carter's home run when the Blue Jays won the World Series in 1993. It was Ricky Henderson who scored on the walk-off bunt by Carlos Guillen when the Mariners won the Division Series in 2000 against the Chicago White Sox. He's always been in the middle of things. Yes, Met fans, I know. He was playing cards. But forgive him of that. We also know that he was a funny interview, had a way with words. We know that he was, uh, he had, uh, Ricky being Ricky, was fun. He played with a flair, with dramatic. And, oh, one of the great frustrations in baseball history was the fact that Ricky Henderson was hurt at the beginning of the 1985 season with the Yankees. And by the time he came back, Yogi Berra was fired as manager and he had a reunion with Billy Martin, who was his manager with the A's. We had a chance to have Yogi Berra and Ricky, Mar and Ricky Henderson in the same dugout giving quotes to the New York press of the 1980s. Oh, what could have been? I, for one, thought the I am the greatest of all time speech when he won the the stolen base championship, I think was, uh, I don't know, I thought it was hilarious. Ricky is an amazing player, one of the great offensive players in the history of baseball. And I have to say something. We are in danger of losing a legacy if the A's move from Oakland. I'm here to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. 
if the A's move from Oakland, who will claim Ricky's legacy? We may never have experienced something like this in baseball history. Let me explain. Teams have moved before, and sometimes when a team moves, the legacy of the great players who were part of the team kind of stay in the original city. Am I right? And sometimes if a team moves, the memories of the players of the old team become hazy. Yankee fans can still recite the great achievements of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Joe DiMaggio. But what New York fan remembers Christy Mathewson or Mel Ott, Bill Terry, or John McGraw, who are all huge figures for the New York Giants? Sure, the San Francisco Giants have them mentioned on their wall of fame, but San Francisco fans don't take those players to heart, just like the Philadelphia A's championships that are listed here. Oakland fans don't brag about 1910. And the great players from those Philadelphia teams, Lefty Grove, Jimmy Fox, Connie Mack, who the manager is one of the great figures in baseball history, is all but forgotten except by baseball historians in Philadelphia. And so sometimes you see a player return back to the city if a new team is installed. The Braves played in Milwaukee, and Hank Aaron was the great star of the Braves championship teams. The Braves moved to Atlanta. Eventually, Hank Aaron finished his career with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he's honored in both Atlanta and in Milwaukee. Same thing with Willie Mays, part of the New York Giants. His numbers retired with San Francisco with the Giants, and in New York with the Mets, where he finished his career. In in incidentally, here at the Oakland Coliseum. Now, if the A's move, where will Ricky's legacy be? There won't be a team here. There's not going to be a team here. They won't install a new team in Oakland, and they're not going to put a statue for him in San Francisco, especially not since he was part of the 89 A's who helped beat the Giants. There are sometimes players who kind of fade away into our memory. And if a team fades away, that becomes really sad. The Expos had some wonderful players on their team. And some of the Hall of Famers from the Expos have been honored by other clubs, like the Mets have embraced Gary Carter and the Cubs have embraced another Hall of Famer in Andre Dawson. But where is Tim Raines' legacy? But it goes even further than that. Yes, the Expos have moved. And the chances of them getting a new team are, I don't know, I'd say 50-50. But at Montreal Canadian Games, they have in the rafters the retired numbers for the Expos. There's still sports being played in Montreal. When the A's move here, this stadium's going to be leveled. The Raiders are gone. The Warriors moved across the bay. There won't be an Oakland team. There won't be an Oakland legacy. And Ricky Henderson may very well be a player who, believe it or not, in a generation or two, will fade away, especially without a fan base to keep his memory alive. His memory's kept alive here every day with uh, the mascot race and the fact that he's, his number is retired, he's honored and remembered. This is called freaking Ricky Henderson Field. But if they move to Las Vegas, sure, they'll have his number up there. But what connection is he going to have to Vegas? The same connection that Christy Mathewson has to San Francisco. Now, the, fielder, the same connection Christian. that uh, Warren Spahn has to Atlanta, which is nothing. And for the teams that fade away into oblivion, like the St. Louis Browns, who became the Baltimore Orioles... There are great players in Cardinal history from the 1920s who are still brought up, whose numbers like Rogers Hornsby and like in the 30s like Dizzy Dean and in the 40s like Stan Musial are still on the walls at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. But who brings up George Sisler and some of the other great figures of the St. Louis Browns? And Sisler was not the player that Ricky Henderson was. He's not one of the four or five greatest offensive players in the history of baseball. What I'm saying is let's celebrate Ricky Henderson and let's make sure his legacy doesn't go away. 
He's the greatest athletic in history. Philadelphia, Kansas City, or Oakland. And he's one of the greatest offensive players of all time. And to have that, who's also someone who is an exciting player, who changed the game, who's one of the most dynamic figures I've ever seen in person. We cannot let that player and that legacy fade away. And if you don't believe me, Connie Mack used to be one of the biggest figures in baseball. There was a league of youth baseball called the Connie Mack League. Christy Mathewson was the first huge superstar in New York baseball. You go up to any fan in Philadelphia or New York and chances are they don't know who they are. Happy Ricky Henderson Day. And they're cheering me on to say, let's keep his legacy alive. We all celebrate Ricky Henderson Day on this December 25th. So go to Locked On MLB pods on Twitter or on Instagram. You can follow me. I'm your pal Sully. I'm Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Happy December 25th and happy Ricky Henderson Day. And let's keep his legacy alive. Even if the A's don't play here and this place is bulldozed, we need to keep Ricky Henderson's spirit alive. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.